And so I'm a, I'm a community investment manager at TELUS, and my focus is really around providing uh, opportunities for community building and development through grants and partnerships, uh, sponsorships, as well as team member engagement of our actual TELUS team member in community. So, as John mentioned, ROI. Uh, I was formerly with the Vancouver Foundation, and our sole purpose of being and our entire mandate was about building healthier communities. At TELUS, that is not our sole mandate. We are a business. And so I wanted to share a couple of specific ROIs that I think might be interesting for you to see. So these factors really do make a determinant as to how and how much we will get in our community investment budget. So community investment, my team, we are seen as a cost center within the company. We, don't, we do not necessarily bring in profit However, we are an influencer within the company, and so these are the RIs that are really important to us. We do a survey of Canadians every year, and we ask you what your likelihood to recommend to tell us as a company is. We ask, ask you about acts of responsibility in society, and I'm actually quite surprised this isn't higher, but you can see the trends that they are increasing every year, which I think is great. Um, and does our CSR and community investment influence your decision to stay with us as a company? that's increasing quite exponentially here. So I think that these are incredibly important factors for us and the reasons why we do community investment. Another great research from the States is the Cone Research Firm, and they solely look at CSR and community investment and what the trends are and what uh, consumers and the general public think about this field. And so what, what we want to take away from these numbers that are increasing every year around what people are expecting of corporations is that corporations are increasingly having much more space to be involved in social impact and to be involved in community work just as nonprofits, uh, charities, and individuals do. And so the areas that are most important are the red. This is really the CSR. So this says that change the way they operate, for example, sourcing materials more responsibly or reducing the environmental impact of their factories. So the way we operate and doing it responsibly for, uh, for humanity and also the environment is CSR. And then this is where I see the incredible opportunity for community investment. This increasing number is around how corporations apply their unique business assets, such as technology, and research to speed solutions to social and environmental problems. And I think there's two interesting facts around this. That we use our actual assets as a corporation, what we do in business for social impact, but to actually help speed the solutions, not necessarily be the ones who create them, because I think this is where we really heavily rely on the nonprofit and charitable work that you do. So the other thing about corporations I want to mention is that they cannot be lumped into one category. Um, I think I hear often phrases of, we want to see corporations more at the we want to see business involved. They are not one big giant uh, industry, there are many, many industries. And so, just to compare ourselves with our own industry in the telco uh, area, these are the figures around CSR and community investment uh, dollars from, from Bell, Rogers and Shaw. And I think, as um, Eli mentioned, part of our, our efforts of being the best have been really around our commitment around dollars. And just last year, we contributed over $46 million in community. And this is more than the total sum of our large competitors. Um, this comes from an individual who is our CEO, Darren Entwistle. He really champions community. And I truly believe that we would not have what we have as a community investment team without his personal championing of community investment. So having that leadership is truly, truly key. Um, because of his leadership, we have an executive leadership team that truly believes in community investment as well. And because of it, we have a team of about 40 staff. That is the largest community investment team in Canada. Um, if you're not aware, uh, you might want to check out the list of members who are involved with the Conference Board of Canada's Corporate Community Investment Council. That is a great starting point for maybe some of you who are wanting to have more profound conversations with corporations who are interested in community investment. The members of that group are all involved in community investment, all at different levels. 
But just to give you a bit of a sense of the context of this field, it is still a very nascent field in the corporate world. Um, community investment managers, there's usually about one or two within a corporation. They usually sit within the public relations department or the marketing department. So you can kind of see where the intentions are in that. Our team is um, held within the HR department, and that's quite intentional because we are all about engaging our team members around community as well. So uh, just to give you a sense, like Shoppers Drug Mart, Shoppers Drug Mart, how many community investment managers do you think they have? One person. One woman out in the headquarters in Toronto focusing on women's health for Shoppers Drug Mart. Um, you know, the interesting question about organizations moving away from tax receipts. Um, we posed that question to this council, how many of us are really needing tax receipts? You know the people who put up their hands? Potash Corp and the Mosaic Company both in the potash industry. They get taxed 35% on their industry. That is a Saskatchewan tax, specifically on potash. Um, so for them, a tax receipt is incredibly important. So I think that I'm sharing this in terms of um, needing to know who your partner is as a corporate partner in community investment and in, in community development is really key because knowing what the, their pressures are, what their context they're working is going to help you in having conversations with them. So what does TELUS do around community investment? Well, this is our focus. I hope that many of you know our slogan, We Give Where We Live. So we give where we live to help drive better social outcomes in our local communities across Canada. We are very, very localized in our giving um, because for us, what's important to our employees and what's important to our communities that we operate in is what's, what's going to help us in, in helping community development. And how we focus on that is through technology new. And we try to try to cover all bases by these three pillars, health and well-being in an environment, sports and education, and arts and culture. And just as John was mentioning that sometimes people don't know what we're doing, it's because we try to do a lot. <laughs> so there's a number of areas that we're trying to target community investment. And this is also partly why we have such a large team of 40 staff because we're trying to do charitable partnerships, grants, we're trying to do employee and retiree giving and volunteering, cause marketing, uh, youth giving programs specifically, and humanitarian. So what I want to share with you are a couple of examples of what we are already doing in this space. But by these examples, I'm wanting to also invite you to think about what you're doing, how perhaps you're currently tar harnessing technology, um, for the work that you're doing and or how you can harness technology and have a <coughs> conversation with us afterwards around how we can actually better partner together on the, the work that you're doing that can also help progress the work that we're doing for true partnership opportunities. So one mm -hmm. exem exemplary example I could say for um, youth and technology all in one is a partnership we've gone into with Free the Children around the We365 app. So you can download this right now. It's a free app through the App Store. And this app is a social platform for youth to specifically find out about causes and issues they can get involved in. They can post causes, but you as nonprofits can also post your causes and initiatives that youth will be going to and filtering through to get engaged and involved. There's a number of different calls of actions that happen through this app. And for us, it's really about how do we get to the individual, the youth, the individual we want to have engaged in issues, and how do we harness the many, many causes that are out in our communities, the nonprofits and charities and the works that they do. I think for us, this was a big, big win because that, this meant we could create help for creating one app versus creating an app for every charity. And some of the other partnerships we have in health, and I'll talk about health specifically a little bit later, but uh, we have a long-standing partnership with the JDRF, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, and I hope you all be out there for their walk on Sunday, June 8th. There's one in the Fraser Valley and uh, Stanley Park as well. But we're really helping to focus in on the research around juvenile diabetes with them through our electronic medical records and through our technology around health. For us, it's really important to not only support an important cause, but to see the opportunities to actually apply technology to help with the solutions that, that organizations are trying to find. 
Um, 60 Minutes Kids Clubs, again, also uh, is an online platform for teachers to use with their classrooms. And uh, there's a really great competitive edge to this where uh, a classroom in Newfoundland can compete with a school in Northwest Territories around what acts kids are doing every day to make healthy choices, whether it's eating uh, healthy foods or it's actually getting some exercise every day. One of our, what I like to think the most altruistic, although John might say that it's not, is our grants through our community boards. Um, this was again championed by our CEO, and he initiated <laughs> boards made up of external and internal community leaders who help us make decisions around local giving. And so we have this hyper-localized way of granting donations throughout the country and internationally. We've currently got operations uh, through community investment in the Philippines, El Salvador, Guatemala, and next year will be in Bulgaria and Romania as well. So some of the technology examples of straight up donations versus partnerships are some of these. And we have been able to fund in Victoria, uh, supporting through the University of Victoria, helping students with disabilities who are going to university with ways to be able to be more independent as they access the courses, as they go through school, and then also in Ottawa, providing technology for youth with disabilities to communicate. And um, what's, I think what's always compelling for the work that we do is when it's an individual like Oliver here, who actually got to hear his voice for the first time through technology. Um, and then lastly, a local example here is the Children's Hearing and Speech Center of BC. And we have supported them extensively over the last seven years. And we're really helping uh, deaf children to hear and to speak. Um, so these children uh, might get a hearing aid, and so they're taught to actually utilize their hearing aids, or they'll get a cochlear implant, and they're taught how to hear and speak. Uh, and it's really incredible to go to the center uh, that's just on the east side of Vancouver, and you hear a group of deaf children singing. It's quite impactful. So again, these are very specific examples of how technology itself is really helping to support the social impact that we're wanting to see in our communities. And then going back to our core business, what is our core business at Telus? We're at Telco. What we do is connect people. We connect people and that in itself is a social impact. And we see it very fundamentally when I think uh, disasters hit. So when disasters hit, we try to do our best to provide our services um, for free. And uh, I think that not only is the telco industry providing a connectivity so that people can connect with their loved ones, but a sense of security and safety as well. And so this is an important part of our community investment work. Uh, and I think this will continue to grow in all of, all of the corporations and organizations that are community investment, how we can be better prepared for disasters and how our core work is supporting um, what happens afterwards. We have so many staff members at TELUS and we also have an incredible, um, incredibly big marketing department that probably is much bigger than any of the, any of the charitable mar uh, marketing teams that I know about. And so one of the best ways to really get um, people galvanized around community is to get back to the individual. And how we get back to the individual is really around our campaign, the We Give Where We Live campaign through our Telestate of Giving. And we have been able to utilize our social media channels to essentially ask the community, how do you give back? Because we like to give back, but we want to know how do you get to give back? And we have received some incredible responses to this, and we are incredibly inspired. And I think this is where we connect again with the individual versus the charity, um, and how the importance of what an individual person does is incredibly inspiring. So I want to share you a quick video about this. This is Michelle's story. She responded, and she let us know how she gives back to her community. Oh, are showing. Well, while that's loading, I want to tell you about the uh, campaign that we're currently doing. 
Um, this is uh, in support of the UC Women's Hospital for their NICU uh, 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 unit. And uh, I think everyone. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I think that was Chad, not me. Oh, okay. Uh, so I think everyone okay. understands that the image of the PPE, you know, at, 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 at your PPE being LinkedIn in the ladies team. And so we are, we are using a campaign right now to kind of to match um, uh, donations to the NICU uh, department at the Women's. And we are doing a PPE campaign. So I hope maybe at lunchtime you will all be taking pictures of your PPEs linked with each other and posting those with the hashtag. I think that basically being able to partner with corporations that are able to get big marketing efforts out are a great way to get the word out versus you trying to do everything on your own. And again, it's that beneficial partnership between the, between the two of us that is really great because we benefit also from what women's hospitals doing as well. Ready? So this is Michelle's story. You can either take some of them down or you can put your hand out of the top. Or the same is they come and we've got the eccentrics, so we've got the down to earth. There's mostly seniors, some of them are ill. My grandma used to live here, and I got to know a lot of the neighbors around my grandma who are now my tenants. As I got to know them better, I got to see who was needing help. So that as you're going from clinic to clinic, that you have access to your own records and you can speak to them with every health professional you visit. And so we are moving in this direction, and uh, I want to leave you with this one video because um, this is really around, I think, 
the concept of shared value, which may, some of you may know from Michael Porter and Mark Kramer, around how you actually utilize your core business as the social impact itself. I think we're finally getting closer and closer to that uh, with the work we're doing in telehealth areas. And I hope that we have more and more opportunities and I invite you to uh, have conversations with us about that as well. Thanks. <laughs> I have a lot of people, I love them very much, and I love what I do as a profession. And this is such a reminder of why I'm using this in the first place. In 1999, my wife and I settled in the and it became very obvious that you know, the needs of the first It's going now. So we started to measure our opinions, getting used to it in our reserve clinics. These people are in their home territory. The communities are geographically remote. This is where they get for money. And they live there, they hunt it there. The healthcare system as a whole fails to truly recognize the challenges of these communities. Access and care due to their geography and culture, and just how difficult it is to get around. My interest in trying to think outside the box and how to provide care for these communities and telehealth started to evolve and started to become a tool to augment care. And we decided to relocate to the Mountain Valley and it became a way for me to continue to. The importance of TELUS for me is that it really armed me with all the tools that I need to stay connected. Connectivity is the backbone to allow us to do telehealth, and having a reliable, consistent connection allows the flow of the dialogue between the doctor and the patient to happen in a seamless way. We're at the point now where I forget that I do telehealth, I'm just trying to be a patient.